This is LTV. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated and by DeCarolis Insurance Agency Incorporated, DeCarolisInsuranceAgency.com and by Enterprise Bank. Enterprise Bank creates success. EnterpriseBanking.com Hello and welcome to In Inside Lumberston. My name is Dean Mazzarola, the mayor for the city. And uh, yes, we're live today, and uh, as we are each and every Thursday, we're here till 5 o'clock. If you have any questions at all about anything that we're talking about or you see something that's going on, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in North Lumberston right now with a, uh, with a tractor trailer that had this giant, looks like underground uh, tank. And I'm not sure if it fell off. Anybody that's up, that's up in that area that can let us know, uh, I was just happening as I was coming here and um, yeah it it this giant tank I don't know if it fell off or just the, the low bed ground out or scraped out I'm not sure what's going on anyway that's going on up in North Lumberton right now so uh, at one of the intersections I couldn't even tell which one but um, if I were you I'd find another way home tonight uh, or call uh, somebody that might be coming home or coming that way and say scrap it don't come that way all right Again, our phone number is 978-534-1626. Art is off tonight. You know, there aren't many times, uh, many shows that Art from the Art Report misses. And don't forget, get us a good guest. Get us a good guest. And uh, we, give, we don't give these out a lot. I can tell you that. And uh, our mug, and you get a mug for a good guest. And uh, it says uh, on the top, the 3 a.m. club. And then it says Inside Lemonster with Dean Mazzarella Mayor every Thursday. And then at the bottom it says the 9 a.m. briefing. Today was our 940, I'm sorry, 747 morning briefings. Do you know what the significance of that is, guys? Does yeah, isn't that that big plane? Yes, but do you know what the significance of it was? To, today, no, sure. all right. Today was the first time they flew a 747. And today was our 747th morning briefing. So uh, if anybody's heading to... Uh, you know, one of those stores that sells lottery tickets or numbers, or you know, you pick your numbers. I would strongly urge: a, you don't spend a whole lot of money, but maybe put those numbers seven forty-seven in there. Seven forty-seven. I, I, that's a. Is that? Would that be a coincidence? I wonder. It'd be a pretty big one. Well, seven forty-seven could have took off in any day. And it, it, it was like 19, it was early. I don't know if I have it in, in my book here, but we're talking early. Let me look. We're talking early. I mean, it's been years. And um, let's see. Uh, 747. 1970. So what's the chances? I mean, the 747 took off. American Airlines, first flight, 747 took off in 1970. So... The chances of it falling on the same day as our 747th morning briefing, I would say, are, are slim to none. All right, you should be getting in your. Um, let's see. You should be getting in your uh, mail in the mail this Recycle Smart. It's actually a postcard, and uh, we get questions often about uh, recycling. What can you do, like? Um, what can you recycle and what can't you? And um, so you, you, you can't recycle uh, bags, garbage bags, plastic bags or plastic wrap. You can't recycle food or liquids, no clothing or linens, and no uh, hoses, wires, chains, or electronics. So it, anyway, it's a postcard and it's really handy. Uh, keep it set aside somewhere so that you can see um, what is recyclable or not, but it's just basically a a friendly reminder on what things and I have questions sometimes when I'm looking to recycle things I'm like can you recycle like pizza boxes? Can you do that? 
you know, Keith's been working very closely with the health department he recently. Has. Yep, to make a PSA. And so how's the PSA pretty going? Pretty shortly. Is it ready? They they got a draft in their inbox today. Wow, very nice. So, so that should be out soon. We'll also have a visual. We'll have a visual so you can actually see. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm that kind of person. You show me that little diagram over there, and it's like okay. But you show you show it to me. You kind of do a video of it. I'm good. I get it. All right. We are going to take a short break. Uh, we do have guests on tonight. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to take a short break. And we'll be right back here at Inside Lemon Store. Do want to thank all of our sponsors. And uh, guess what? We have new sponsors coming. I've got to take that up with Scott. But a uh, new program on, on, um, and a new way to uh, fund sponsorships. And you could do it month by month. You could do a well, whole slew of different uh, of options. Uh, to sponsor, you know how you hear it, like at the beginning of the show, you, you hear Enterprise Bank and, and uh, the Carroll's Insurance and uh, MP Crowley uh, Construction Company, you hear them, and uh, it's very reasonable, might I say. All right, short break, coming right back. probably welcome back by the way but probably people are probably looking like what is that that's pheasant run uh right off exchange street and uh that was a ski area that uh we skied at and i was looking at the picture and i and i thought uh i i thought that hill looked a lot bigger when i was young and we had a lot of fun it was affordable it was close by and uh yeah just tons of fun they had ski clubs at the junior high schools uh ski club at the high school uh, Jack Sully's name was actually on the, uh, he was actually the vice president, or he had some significant role in the uh, ski club uh, at the time. So a, a lot of people learned to ski at, uh, at, at, at Pheasant Run. As I said, it was affordable, it was very convenient. You could almost, uh, you know, if you lived in the neighborhood, you could drag your skis up there. And we had a lot of fun. And so it's nice to see that video. Uh, imagine somebody still had film of of uh of of the ski area that's remarkable anyway maybe you saw your picture in there wouldn't that be cool okay i know that person it's me all right again nine seven eight five three four sixteen twenty six and i want to make sure i get your names right so let me see how i do <laughs> go for sheila it. kelly how's that 
Pretty good, which, huh? Which one that. is Sheila Kelly? <laughs> I, I got that one right, right? That is correct. So that, are you impressed? I, I got am that very one right. much impressed. Very and impressed. She's the community relations representative for Mass Behavioral Health Helpline. And you might not have known that there's an actual organization, and I see it out there, but we're going to learn all about it. So it's always like you see an ad and you see a phone number, but behind the scenes, we're going to find out exactly what goes on there. And mm -hmm. then Anna Tavia. Am I right? Yes. And is your last name Spite? Is Anna, first yeah. name, yeah. Artavia, Artavia hyphen Spain. It's Spate. 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 Artavia hyphen Spain. I could look at it and say it's Spite. 833-773-2445 <laughs> is the helpline. So, we all see this. Billboards, mm -hmm. advertisements, things on social media. And uh, what is the organization? Is it nonprofit? It is uh, the. So before we get started, I just want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here on this platform to educate the Massachusetts residents about this amazing helpline. Mm. Um, so I just want to give a little bit. I am a community uh, relations representative for the Central Massachusetts, and we're both excited. So I'm just going to. Uh, give her some information, I mean, give her some time to um, introduce herself. So I'm on his buddy. We work in the buddy system, so mm -hmm. our, our regions are split up by two people. Um, so I'm Sheila Kelly, um, and you got my name correct. Usually, Thank you. Usually no one gets it wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Let's end the show right now. Let's go to commercial because, uh, <laughs> and I got your first, Anna Atavia. I got that right. The first and the the first name and the last name, Ana Artavia Spain. But our goal, <laughs> uh, our goal is to educate the public, educate the community about the helpline. Now, this help uh, community helpline was um, originally launched uh, in January third of this year. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so it's a brand new baby. So is it? A, is it? A, I don't know how you got away from my original question, <laughs> which was, are you a nonprofit? Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. I'm so sorry. You're so pro programmed. You've got like a mission. Yes, like, I hey, am in a we're mission. We've got a lot to talk about and get it all yes, out there. Then. So you must be a nonprofit. Yes. Funded by who? We're run there by the um, mental health department, the Department of Mental Health. So state. They and fund the you. state, yes. And the core mission is what? To help people? Uh, to help the co uh, community. Afford uh, the affordable and equal access to. Mental health for every walk of life. Which in is probably one of the top two issues going on right now. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely. always housing. I mean, there's always issues, right? I mean, I think yes. housing's been an issue. I, I saw yesterday in Boston, there's 33,000 people on a waiting list to get oh, into the wow. Boston Housing Authority. So that's an issue. I mean, right. that is. I mean, that's an issue. Right. But mental health it's is so skyrocketing is. Yeah. in yeah. terms of the issue. Yeah. And so they formed this yeah. new agency. We're under the Department of Public Health, and it's a one-stop, kind of one phone number, 24-7? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's 24-7. It's seven days a week, 365 mm -hmm. a year. Yep. Um, we find that we are accessible. Um, again, we launched uh, January of uh, three of 2003, and there's three ways to uh, contact us, mm -hmm. either uh, by, call by calling us at the number... Um, 833-773-2445 or by chatting uh, going in our masshelpline.com um, or texting. Uh, we also have uh, accessible for people that are deaf or they cannot oh, wow. hear. Jeez. Yeah, so this is a very unique helpline as you're going to see as time, you know, as we, we talk about it. We have a slide to it. put up, you guys. Um, somebody back there, we got a little slide so we can put up. And yes. so, and so somebody's, it's three o'clock in the morning. Somebody's lonely. They're a little bit depressed. They're mm -hmm. having a hard time. And, um, you know, they're like, you know, it's, it's early in the morning. It's a place I can yeah. call. I call this phone number. And then somebody's going to answer that phone if they're yes. not chatting. You said they can kind of chat if they want to go back and forth. But there's going to be a person at the other end of the line? Yes, definitely. It's a live call. Mm -hmm. So what is unique about this helpline is, let's say the call they call at 3 o'clock, like you said. Uh, the helpline answers the phone. They're going to introduce themselves right. because they want to make sure that they feel warm enough to talk about 
uh, whatever is happening let's take a in deep their breath. lives. Let's exactly. Talk about yeah. who we are let's for a minute. Let's have a conversation. And let's have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. At that moment, they will do uh, a triage, an assessment. What's going on? Uh, what's going on? Mm. Um, and what is so unique about this helpline is that it holds the hand, it navigates, it helps them navigate through the whole um, conversation right. to get connected. Because uh, behind the scenes, you have the resources that the state has or whoever for everything, right? I mean, exactly. substance abuse, whatever it might be. Exactly. That person isn't just there thumbing through the phone book or something. They right. literally have all the resources there. But the biggest thing is they made a, a personal contact. Exactly. It's a live person. Mm. Uh, we will not put them on hold. We will stay with them right through triage assessment, uh, connecting them with uh, the community uh, behavioral health centers that mm -hmm. there is 25 in Massachusetts. Or, or and they any, operate 24-7 too? Uh, they extended their hours because of our helpline, but um, there is always somebody on call. Mm. So if it just, is just a second here, I mm -hmm. gave the wrong information. Um, let's see. So coming westbound, just before the Super 8 there, that's where the, this, this tank, whatever they were carrying on this trailer okay. is messing things up. So not, not, I only saw a quick picture of it, and uh, I was trying to decipher where it is. All I saw is traffic signals and, uh, and, <laughs> and telephone lines, so I couldn't really tell where it was. So it's westbound on Route 2 near Route 12. And so uh, I'd stay away from that area until, they, uh, to, to, until the area clears. I'm sorry, go ahead. I just, <laughs> somebody's coming home and I'm like, you better call them and tell them not to. So somebody had an ins and It an looks accident? like this huge tank. You guys want to try to zoom in on this? Is it, if it's on social media, we can pull it up back here. Um, we'll just take a bit. I don't know if it is. This is a person sitting in a car that sent it to me. It's this big tank. And I don't know if it just bottomed out or if it, uh, anyway, there it is. If it oh, bottomed wow. out or if oh it, my uh, God. yeah, it's huge. If it bottomed out or um, if anybody's out there that's listening to the show, 534-1626, I don't know whether it bottomed out or it fell off. But anyway, it looks like you should avoid the area for a couple of minutes. Yes, right, you until should. Until clear that out. It's not on our way out, right? The last <laughs> thing, oh, sure, that's why you're asking. <laughs> Where do you live? Um, so I live in Connecticut. Connecticut? Yes, closer to Massachusetts. So I'm in the, I'm in Thompson, Connecticut. Thompson, nice little town, right? Yes, Thompson, it's on the bottom, uh, the border of Ke uh, Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Like Putnam and Woodstock yes. and all that, right? Yes, yes. Those are nice yes. places to live. And where do you live? I live in Easton, Massachusetts. Easton? Yeah, about an hour from here. Yeah, 495. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 495, yeah. 128, that yeah. area down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. Well, you'll have an easy commute getting out of here. I wish sure. Because there's no so. tanker over there. I wish sure, either way. What do you mean? Is, all you got to do is get, you, you take 190 to 290. I mean, there's, there's nobody else. Well, you might hit Worcester traffic. Yeah, Worcester That's traffic. Yeah, probably tonight. But it, So this is like, uh, this is, I mean, they've spent a lot of time putting a lot of thought behind it and organizing absolutely. it. Absolutely. And tying them in with other agencies. Yes. And the biggest mm -hmm. thing is to have somebody call. Yep. And uh, just think of what a difference it would be for so many when they needed that help and yeah. they had a chance to, you know, call a phone number and, and get that phone number. Uh, I remember um, when telephone books were a big thing, that we did this, like, big lobbying effort to put a phone number in for domestic violence. Wow. It's not easy because no, the telephone, no. you know, they, they, they didn't want everybody to just start saying... You know, here's a phone number for this, and here's a phone number for that, get, and then it gets just kind of lost. Yes. And they had very specific things that were allowed to be put in the telephone book. But eventually, we got it in there. Of course, now who uses a telephone book? Everything went Google's, but at 2 in the morning or the holiday or whatever, it's, sometimes you're like, geez, where do I call? So somebody, you get all confused. Now, there's a one-stop kind of make that phone call. Yes. Yeah. And, and is this something that, say a police officer is on a call or a mm -hmm. firefighter or somebody mm -hmm. in public safety and they're at a call and they're, and, and they're like, you know, I've got a call of a disturbance, but um, I think this, this person might need, mm -hmm. you know, That's some a, help. Yeah. And yeah, they didn't definitely. break the law and they're not a warrant of apprehension or anything. They're not in danger to themselves or others or anything, but they might need some help. Yes, definitely. Is it okay for them to call that 
that number? Yes, definitely. It's not only for um, an individual that mm -hmm. is going through crisis at that time, but it's also for providers that is trying to get resources, mm -hmm. for police officers trying to get resources, services for somebody that they just saw. So not needed. even emergency, sometimes exactly. just for general information. Yeah. So yes. this is the one stop. One stop right? shop. Yeah, one stop yeah. shop. Nice. It's kind of like the entryway into behavioral health in Massachusetts. Yes. Let me tell you about Joe, just to kind of give you an example. Yes. Joe? Yeah, Joe. Who's Joe? Joe's a hey, Joe. <laughs> Joe. Is there a Joe, Joe back there? Who's Joe? He's not even a guest. Who's Joe? <laughs> Joe's my 32-year-old um, Portuguese-speaking uh, uh, individual who, you know, he just, lots of stress at work. Mm. Um, and Joe's dog passed away recently. Um, and Joe's dog had been his, you know, buddy. By, by his side his buddy. forever. 13 years. Yeah. What's his name? His buddy. Yeah, his buddy. His buddy. His, his, yeah, yeah, exactly. Buddy. buddy. So just not feeling himself, feeling really down, um, and not really knowing where to turn to. And a coworker of Joe's actually told him, hey, there's this new service in Massachusetts. Um, you can call the helpline, and it's for anybody, any resident. And it's, um, it's pay or blind. So... Um, anyone can call and access this resource regardless of ability to pay or have insurance. Um, and, and Joe really would benefit from getting connected with a the therapist, but Joe's not, he's never d um, accessed mental health before, um, is a little overwhelmed with how to navigate the system, so he calls the helpline. Um, and gets because any language, people with disabilities, if you're everybody, deaf, 200 this thing languages, is like, 200 languages this, are represented. This is like, just call the number. Call the number. The back end of this thing yep. is, is infinite. It's, it is. It's exactly. got so much behind it. Don't to, worry about it. Just exactly. Not another thing to worry about. Exactly. Just call the number. Mm -hmm. And he just, he reaches a friendly person on the end named Mike. And Mike, you know, is a clinician and he's there on the helpline and his job is to assess Joe and to help kind of triage him to the appropriate level of care. Mm. Um, and so kind of through the process of this phone call during, you know, an assessment is completed to, de to determine um, his needs and his, uh, if there's a risk level. Now, Joe's on a low risk level. And, yep. um, you know, they determine that he would benefit from getting connected with a therapist. Yep. Um, and so <coughs> the helpline is able to do a warm transfer to um, the community behavioral health centers. Um, and they're going to call them and say, hey, I got Joe on the line. Mm. And. You know, he's 32, he, he's really struggling, stress at work, he just lost his dog. He would benefit from getting connected with a therapist. Right. And so that warm transfer is gonna make that connection, whereas, you know, just kind of giving Joe the number might be like anxiety provoking to even yeah. try and call and make that, but that warm transfer. Joe, hang in there for a second. Yeah, we're makes gonna, that connection. We're gonna do some work for you yeah. for you. We'll get yeah. you connected. And you know what, when you're stressed out like that, everything is confusing. It, right? everything. Exactly, especially the mental health system. It's very overwhelming to even you know, know where to begin. And then if, if we'll say English is in your first language, first language. Um, you know, that adds a whole other layer of access and, you know, um, access to care and everything. So, um, and then what really sets us apart and we're, we're really unique, and I think it's important too for the mental health world is follow-up care. Mm. So our, the behavioral mm -hmm. health line is gonna call Joe back, we'll say in a couple of weeks, because he was low risk need to get connected with the therapist, and they're gonna call back in a couple of weeks and say, hey, Joe, just following up. I know we did a warm transfer, and you got set up um, with the Community Behavioral Health Agency. Um, how'd that go? Were you able to get an appointment? Um, just to make sure that connection was made mm. um, and can be closed, because you know, I think historically, mental health um, Things Keep fall between the cracks. The cracks, exactly. Nobody has the time to make that follow-up call. Exactly. Or and that shows somebody you really care. You make yeah. the phone, phone call. It's like, hey, Joe, how's it going? Mm -hmm. You know, how are things? Uh, you know, maybe we get you, you know, working with some uh, adoption, play, you know, a place that adopts uh, the dogs and animals. Yes. And yeah. Come on down. Yeah. We get you volunteering. Yeah. I heard you picked up, you know, you're thinking about having another dog. Things are getting better. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, who knows, right? Who knows? And, and so... This, this answers um, all of it. If I do not speak English, can I call? The answer is yes. yes. 200, over 200 languages. Yes. And um, so everything is, is covered there. Now, one of the things before I forget is that we have a community outreach team in the city. And I don't know if you've spoken with them, but 
uh, communities are beginning to start to, to have community outreach teams mm -hmm. and are made up by civilians and different people from different agencies sure. and the police right. department. Yep. And, and they go out and deal with a lot of the issues that we're speaking of today. It's helpful for them. I don't know if you have literature, little cards you can give, that we can give out. And, yes, um, I actually have some pamphlets that I could bring in yeah, and so I could give them to That would be helpful. You. And I did uh, connect with CHN9, yep. which is connected to the CHIP, which is part of the police mm -hmm. outreach. Yep. So I That's will, really helpful because yeah. especially mm -hmm. holidays and when yeah. all yes. those phone numbers are like, yeah, we'll be back on Monday and, yeah. you know, all of those are very frustrating. And that person that's reaching out at the time might just hang up the phone and might never call again or who yes. knows what might happen yes. and you're right. trying to avoid that. So right. this is basically, hey, you're having a rough time for whatever reason, you need some help for whatever reason, somebody's there 24-7 on the phone, mm -hmm. get us by email, however it is. Carla, welcome to the show. Hello? No? Do we get connected? Yeah. Hey, what's yeah. going on, Crystal? Not much. They moved the broccoli, the frozen broccoli at Hannaford. What's going on? I demand <laughs> a full investigation. They had to eat more self-checkouts. You they added more self-checkouts. You tell Mark to call me because I like to talk to people when I check out. Yeah. I'm getting pretty good. You know, I can even wring out my own bananas now. <laughs> it's not, at first it was like a whole thing. You had to like look it up and put the first three letters. I'm like, this is a science project? I just want to get my stuff and get out of here. What's going on? Now. He's still in, his, he's still in surgery. He, is he still in the, out of work? Yeah. Well, you tell um, him, call him up and I want to know where the, they moved the broccoli to it. Call him at his house and say, Dean wants to know where they moved the broccoli, frozen broccoli. All right, I think you'll laugh. Oh, that is so funny. You think so? I'll talk to you later, buddy. All Bye. right, talk to you later. 9785341626. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're talking about the Massachusetts Behavioral Health Line. Help line. I know. Health it's a tight twister. It's, it's a tight, yeah. <laughs> say that three times quick. It's easy to say, Sheila Kelly, <laughs> Community Relations. So this is a new agency. I mean, relatively it is very new, much so. and very much needed. Yes, yes. definitely. Um, I mean, let's just get into kind of drill down on the mental health part of it all. Yes. That is becoming so. To try to illustrate this for you, and I said this to a classroom full of police officers that were in training, mostly mm -hmm. chiefs and stuff. I said, when I was a police officer, we might, I can think for ten years out of ten years, I might have been involved in a warrant of apprehension. Five times? Oh, wow. Maybe ten. In ten years. That has changed. I, yeah, and I now, and a warrant of apprehension is somebody might be in danger to themselves or others. Yeah. So the court issues a warrant to have somebody taken to be evaluated by order of the court. Yeah. Today, it's not uncommon to have five in a day yes. or ten in a day in yes. a city this size or maybe more. Yeah, yes. I was that, at a police station yesterday yeah. um, in a sizable community, and I asked that question. I said, what percentage are your calls related to mental health? And, you know, that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I was told 20 to 30 percent. Yeah. Yes, that Easy. Was that's what I was going to say. I was going to say 30 yep. percent. Yes. And so the frustrating thing is you get to somebody's house, and I use this like your Joe example, right? And you get there, and you knew somebody was developing early signs of mental illness. Mental health. Something's going on, sure. right? The TV set's talking to me. The, there's, somebody's listening to me. They're, they're kind of early signs, not all the time, but they're just things that you pick mm -hmm. up on. Sure, sure. But there was never an opportunity to say, you know what, let's see if we can't get you some outpatient help. Let's see, let's, let's see if we can't get in here. Maybe there's a hoarding situation. Let's see if we can't. Before this yeah. turns into the point where now we've got to come up with a warrant of apprehension to take somebody against you know, their will and take them to the court to have them evaluated. Let's get in and help them before. And, but there were very limited resources at the time. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like they're paying more and more attention to it. And this is a good start here. Because, and then you're going to follow up to make sure things going on. So it doesn't always have to be a crisis situation. No. It could be the, the, the 
something small to me is big to somebody else. Something exactly. big to somebody else is small to me, sure. right? Just like Joe. He's yeah. a great like Joe. example. He's a hard worker. Yeah. Joe gets home, right? Mm -hmm. his, his buddy was his, his, his dog. Yes. And dog passes away. He's got stress at work. You know, the people's rent's going up. There's all this stuff going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal to And it could be people. very minor. It could be a call that they need resources because right. we also, pro the helpline also pro provides, um, you know, resources and services regarding transportation. Let's say Joe couldn't get to the therapy because he didn't have transportation. We will provide that for him. Uh, let's say if Joe needed food, we will provide that resources for him. Um, so it's not only crisis. Right. Yes, Anything. we are there. Whatever's but important it, to you. Exactly. It could be for any provider that is calling for resources for a patient. Right. Um, it could be a police, again, a hospital or emergency exactly, room. Exactly, right. emergency yep. room. And a lot of these resources mm -hmm. exist through other systems, and we're working collaboratively with them. If we're getting them the resources or we're, we're doing a warm transfer to yes. another state agency line, we'll say, you know, for, for food benefits mm. or... How many people work for this agency right now? Oh my goodness, that's a good question. You don't know the answer? That's I it. don't know the <laughs> answer. Well, so it's kind of broken up. It's yes. because it's all different agencies? It is. Yes. Because right. we have the helpline. Yes. Which is staffed with, you know, clinicians. Right, so that's like one division. One division. And then you have the community relations division who are out getting the word out, talking to fabulous people like you. No, I was just, I was yes, just wondering. Yes, definitely. Like, just it. like us. And there is 10 of us. Uh, I'm just saying hi to all of you. What do you mean? There are like, some <laughs> desks somewhere watching us? Yes, hey, get back to work. <laughs> you still got five minutes <laughs> left before. There is eight more of us. There is eight more. of you. Get yes. back to work. We're These the guys are... Yes, yeah. definitely. That's it. But, you know, knock it off. Get back to work. We still got... <laughs> that is through the Massachusetts doing exactly what we're doing, um, t reaching out through our reach, education, presentation, um, so there is eight of us, yeah, there's, there's ten all together, the northeast. and there are different regions in Massachusetts. Yeah, northeast, uh, there's the north, yeah, southeast, west. Boston, and then uh, the western part of the state. Yes. And all that one number goes to all, all those. It doesn't matter one. really where yep. it is, it right? Like matter. you said, it's kind of, doesn't really matter. It's, it's what goes on behind the scenes. Exactly. Yes. Think, think if, you know, in the area of suicide. If mm -hmm. somebody just made that call, I wonder what difference that would have made yeah. exactly. in somebody's life at that very moment, at that very second, what it would have been if they would have had a phone number they could call. Yeah. And I know there's suicide prevention now. As I said, they're starting to put more and more resources out there. Um, just think what it, 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 you know, just get over that little hump. Right? Exactly. And have that immediate exactly. access to someone. And how about substance abuse? And you know, somebody's yes. like, you know what? I'm ready, and I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get myself into recovery, that phone call can be made. So you pretty much do everything. 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 One stop amazing. shop. Yes, exactly. One stop One shop. One stop shop. One. And we're here for you. All the way. See that? We brought her all the way in from Thompson, Connecticut. <laughs> all the way from Thompson, <laughs> Connecticut. I see am that? here. <laughs> Even though you mis mispronounced my last name. <laughs> well, you set me up. You set me up. <laughs> You set me up. You got one for two. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, look, well, wait a minute. Yeah, Hold exactly on. Gave you. S P E I G H T. Exactly. Spite. <laughs> spite. I didn't say. I kept the G silent, so it's spite. Spite. <laughs> you don't look like a very spiteful person. <laughs> I am not. She's what, the opposite. What kind of last name is that? Of what ethnic descent is? It's English. It's English. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that happen? Did your mother my and husband. father have a prearranged marriage for you my or something? Husband. Oh, huh? My husband. My husband's last name, Artavia, is mine. It's, uh, and what yes. kind of a name is Artavia? It's actually from Spain, but from I am Spain. Costa Rica. I'm from, from Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. They don't have arranged marriages out there? So that no. You, no? So you really went the whole distance. You, you yes. found this, huh? So what happened when you took him home and said, my dad, <laughs> guess what? I want you to meet this guy. Straight. <laughs> No. What did they say? No. They did they like him much. right away? They loved him. They didn't say you got to find somebody of <laughs> no. Costa Rican descent or something? No. No? No. Are you sure? I'm very Ma sure. Your mother didn't say, hey, come over here. Who's no. This? Where'd, you find, where'd you find this guy? No. All right. No. I, so they I liked them? I reassure you, everything was fine when I brought And they liked them? And they like right away, him. they fell in love with them. Right away. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe it. They loved him they very did, much really? so. All yes. right. I'm just checking. <laughs>
S-P-E-I-G-H. T. T with 534-1626. That's our phone number here. Well, ladies, did I forget anything? And please leave off the brochures. I'll make sure we get Yes, into. definitely. I will, br I will bring it in. Um, I just want to thank you for bringing us at this pl uh, platform to bring much education, much needed education mm. regarding um, behavior health and addiction, the helpline. Um, this is helpful for me in our office because we get calls about everything and, okay. and, and so sometimes yes. it requires a lot of research to find the right yes, place. Right. This is going to help us because now we have one phone number. Here's, here's a question here you prepared yeah. and this is a really good one. I didn't want to just go by that. Um, <laughs> it says if I'm concerned about my child or friend can mm -hmm. I call to get help for them and the answer is yes absolutely. Yes, you definitely. can call for somebody else. Yes. You can call for your kids and uh, really it's it really is set up that if it's an issue Yes, and I just want to leave um, with this. Um, See, she, as soon as I start asking a question, she's like, she's like, <laughs> no, go ahead, ask me. She's the gonna questions. get in that car, that little Subaru out there with the Connecticut place, and she's it out of not here. Subaru. What is it? <laughs> it's a Toyota. It's a Toyota. 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 Right. She's gonna jump in that car, she'll be out of here. No, 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 definitely not. Wheels will be it was spinning. A pleasure. Like, the guy, like they came in and had all the questions here for me already. <laughs> All pre-rehearsed, and then I went off script. And <laughs> oh no! Now what? The guy's asking me about how much money I got in my IRA. Oh my goodness! Who was asking that? That was right in here. It said, <laughs> yeah. "It said, ask them how much they have in their IRA." That's what it said. Okay. Somebody's messing with it. Them eight other people back at the office. Okay. They're messing with you. Well, anyway, leave those offer off as if you can. We'll spread them out to everybody. Yeah, yes, so we can definitely. Keep them in glove with ordering more. Scanning. Yes. Yeah, ordering more, getting them sent out to yes. community partners, any networks. Were you um, always in this line of work? I mean, both of you? Um, I was a com prior to this, yeah. I was a community outreach specialist for the Department of Health for the COVID team. Oh, yeah. So that's when wow. the COVID hit in 2020. We were out there doing outreach, pro, uh, providing much education regarding the COVID and trying to um, get as much people get vaccinated. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So you uh, and you? Same thing, and my, uh, my background's clinical. So mm -hmm. um, I've kind of worked the array of uh, mental health care in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Most recently, um, I was at Mass General for 10 years working um, similar in their integrated behavioral health program, which is mental health care oh, and primary so you bring care. bring some uh, experience. Exactly. Good for, you. Good, for yes. you. Good for this. Good for this program. It's nice to see what, you know, we're starting to pay more attention. Yes. Um, to yes, these definitely. issues. You know, they're, they're clearly sometimes. It, it, it uh, kind of frustrates me, frustrates me sometimes because it takes a long time for an issue from the street to get attention of the, you know what I mean? It takes a, the so state, long. The like, state, the legislator, just, yeah. Yeah, it just yeah. takes yeah. a long time. Like, Very long. It, 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 you know, listen to the people on the ground. They'll give you yeah. a, the, the people that deal with this every day. Yeah. They'll, and, yes. and I think we're getting better at it. But you know? now we're here. Yeah, you we're are. here. And, and this is exciting. I've you been know? in the field, you know, for 15, 20 years, and this is this is going to, this is different yeah. than anything well, I've ever Well, just think in your line of work, if you could have made that phone call right. for right. somebody. Yeah, for, for so many people. If somebody said, look, I'm, you know, I'm having a hard time, I have to go back home, and yeah. there's nobody really to take care of me, and, you know, hospital's got a job, and they've, you know, and insurance and everything, and it's yep. like, you know, I can't send this person back. Maybe somebody can check on them, make sure. Right? What a yep. wonderful thing to be able to yeah, do, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is wonderful. And this is such a, a great uh, service that uh, the, com you know, the be uh, Behavior Health <coughs> Helpline is doing, which is, if anything, I would tell everybody, the Massachusetts residents, is to let them know that this is free. Yeah. This is actually free. It's 24-7. Um, it is, we have two languages, 200 languages that is available. So if English is not your first language, don't worry, right. still call. Mm. We're here for you. Um, and we will provide, and there is three different ways that you could contact the helpline. is by either calling um, or going or texting or chatting. There you go. Um, Look at that. They got it scanned right Yeah, there you go. That's everything in on one screen. Yes, in one screen. And um, if any of the listeners um, is listening, thank you very much for having us. Um, but also, we would like to um, say that if anybody's listening and would like more information regarding the helpline and would like to 
get a presentation going in their mm. company and their nonprofit organization. So they want us to stop by. Please reach out to us. I will provide. I don't know if I could provide you the our webs our uh, where um, just leave email? all that information off, and we'll oh, okay. spread it out to the different agencies and Excellent. schools and everything else yeah. just around okay. us here. Excellent. I will provide you the our email. Please reach out. We mm. will be definitely. We will make it happen. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you very much. I gotta throw you out now. It's time for bingo. <laughs> you are it's playing time bingo? For bingo. 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 Can, can I play? You guys can ready I for play? bingo can back I play there? Bingo? So I, I want you to know when you go home tonight, you say I got kicked out because of a bingo. <laughs> no, seriously, bingo you kicked bingo? out. No, we don't. Oh. Play. <laughs> no. Bingo. I'm kind like, of show you think this is. Bingo. This is a serious show. <laughs> This is very serious um, business here. I don't know. I saw the sled in and the... <laughs> <laughs> this I'm is like, the, this is a this very is relaxing... The, they'll tell you back there, this is the anything can happen <laughs> okay. show. And it's live, too, so you can't go back and fix it. There's no okay. editing. You're rolling okay. This is it. Those other eight people back at, the, at work? Yeah. That's it, hey. They know, they know more about you now than they've ever known. No. That's great. One Thank more you. try on her name. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no, definitely. No. It's okay. You I, can I call me to, Anna. If, if, uh, uh, it's just so interesting how people meet. and Yeah. You know, how, I mean, in the world of, you know, ethnic, right? You, you, yeah. Mom and Dad, why don't you come home with a nice French-Canadian lady <laughs> or Italian girl? Oh or, right? They do. Yeah. I mean, they're always like, you know, I hope he meets, he meets, a, he, I hope he meets this. Oh, a nice Irish guy. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, uh, another Haitian, right? We, you know, that's yeah. how parents are. Yes, exactly. Especially and then you come back with back Gilbert, then. whatever. You know, you do come back with somebody. And, <laughs> Especially but, but back But they like them. Yeah. So he must have really made a good impression. <laughs> he sure did. Did he bring your mother, like, flowers or something the first um, time he met let her? Me remem let me remember. Did he? I think he did. I think we took her out for dinner. Really? Actually. And, and he liked her? Yes. Yes. I, yeah. Yeah, See, definitely. it's a love story. That's what this show's all it about. It is a very love story. I like it. <laughs> very much a love story. Well, because, story. you know, parents prejudge you. You know, they yes. walk in and you're like, oh, no, is this... Well, now is this, they, pre -Google, this they Google you. Yeah, this they is Google the guy you. you're going to spend everywhere. the rest of your life with? Come over here, you know? Exactly. It's everywhere. They already have your whole bio exactly. by the time you get there nowadays. It, it is funny. It is funny because I notice, like, uh, if I meet people, like, it's you're not even out of the room yet, and they're Googling... <laughs> Your yes. name. Yes. Well, you know, I am a mother. <laughs> hey, Google her name here right now. This is her alias. This isn't even a real name. This is an alias. <laughs> My name is I R Artavia Spelled Spain. both ways, frontwards and backwards. backwards. You, you can't mess it up. <laughs> but it's so true because I am a mother and I do tend to, you know, I, ch I make sure that, hey. and I'm a grandmother, so I tend to. Yes, be definitely. tough. Yes. Check the Google. In your mind, yeah, you're definitely. like the matchmaker in your mind, like who you well, want for your kids. Well, not the matchmaker, but no, no, I but do you, check. you have expectations of yes. who you hope. Yes. That you know is going to come in. Definitely, <laughs> but I'm not that strict. <laughs> but I am. Well, good. I'm glad things worked <laughs> out. You got kids and grandkids, okay. and I guess things worked out. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, and your IRA, do you want to talk about that? No, not really. All right, we got to go. We'll be right back. Thank you, ladies. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. You're good so sports. Thank You're good you. sports. And uh, do not forget the line. You could write this down in your calendar somewhere in the house, wherever. We'll have pamphlets. We'll have other things. 833-773-2445. And that's the helpline for just about anything. And if they, they I, chances are, if you call for and help, the web. they're going to find you. Or the website. Uh, chances are, if you call, they're going to they're gonna be able to get you some help, right? I mean, that's really what them set themselves up for. All right, taking a short break, and then we'll be right back. We'll give you the updated uh, information on everything you need to know, and then some. And uh, then we'll have pictures of the week, and uh, I'm getting all kinds of... The phone's lighting up, so that people must want to tell me with this, what's going on with this situation. We'll let you know when we come back. We'll be right back.
Lumminster, just a couple of minutes left, maybe 10 minutes left. If you have a question at all, 978-534-1626. And uh, that was Keith out there with uh, Nicholas. And uh, I might and add... and Johannes, right? What's that? Oh, Keith, yeah. It was right. Keith. And um, I might add that they were out there the day of the snowstorm. And uh, out in, at, at Prospect Park, which is uh, up on Prospect Street or off Prospect Street, uh, just after Lawrence Street. And... Uh, uh, pretty informative. And uh, Nick, uh, our conservation agent, has been setting up uh, walks through trails and taking kids and anybody that wants to go out and doing these kind of nature walks and talking about the different uh, variety of trees and, and uh, just the natural resources and habitat that's out there. And uh, he'll be doing more of them. They're, they're pretty well attended, and I give them credit. They were out there on the, uh, the big snowstorm of... Yeah, Channel 5 even stopped by to see Channel this. 5 said, what are these guys doing, right? <laughs> Running was, around in the woods with a camera. Something's up. It was a lot of fun. It was very informative. Yeah. No, he's a good guy, and he's, he's, he's smart. 62,000 people were tested in the last seven days for COVID. 3850 was the, uh, I guess we could do the slide thing, right, guys? Uh, 3850 was the, well, yeah, that's a good shot, huh? <clears throat> little drone shot. And uh, 3850 tested positive. 85 deaths. One is too many. 986 in all of Worcester County, if you look right at the bottom. We do, they give us a two-week uh, amount, but if you split that in half in seven days, we're 35, 36, somewhere around there. But hospitalization is down. Uh, 618 hospitals across the state. There are 4,000 beds in the state, and right now there are 618 people in those beds across the state. So that's down. Intensive care at 58 is down. Intubated at 18 is down one, so good news. If you wanted to know the national days of, it's... American Citizenship Day, International Rescue Cat Day, National Banana Cream Pie Day. That's a very important day. National Egg McMuffin Day, National Read Across America Today. I actually got to read at St. Leo's this morning to the 8th grade, and then I went over to the 4th grade at St. Anna's, and we had a lot of fun. So thank you for inviting me. Um, it was fun. And it's Texas Independence Day. So there you go. In 1933, does anybody know what happened in 1933? King Kong, uh, the first showing of King Kong at Radio City Music Hall, just in case you didn't know that. In 1939, Massachusetts legislature votes to ratify the U.S. Bill of Rights. And in 1949, uh, the first automatic streetlight in New Milford, Connecticut. Who'd have thunk? I wonder if there was like a bunch of people standing out there, like looking at this streetlight, going, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then what if the light didn't go on? But apparently it did, and that happened in 1939, 1949, the f uh, oh, that was 49. 1965, one of the most popular musicals, films of all time, The Sound of Music, starring Julie Andrews. Did you guys watch that? You guys are young guys, you watch that? Huh? The Sound of Music? <clears throat> 1970, uh, that's what I was saying. It is our 747th morning briefing this morning. And this is the 19, in 1970, American Airlines. This is their first time they ever flew the Boeing 747. And in 1976, Walt Disney World logs its 50 millionth guest. I wonder if everybody, you know how they count, they have all the counters that go, you know, they count how many people went in and how many, I wonder if they like ever on a day, they had like 5,000 people go in, but only 4,992 people came out. No, I wonder, right? I wonder if like everybody that goes in comes out. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, in other news here, we have a $3 million letter of intent submitted to uh, MassWorks. So this is to, to do work up around Marcello Ave, Moreland Ave, Tolman Ave, Hamilton Street, Crawford Street. This is for sewer, water, and sidewalks. Another $3 million safe routes to school project, Visco Lloyd Ave. That'll be starting, if not this month, next month. And uh, grants are submitted for the internal communication system at Samoset uh, for the camera system at Francis Drake School. And uh, all those other things that you see there, I don't have time to read them all, but we have downtown common under, uh, design underway. We're going to be doing some uh, work uh, preserving the integrity of the historic character. And if you want to follow the police station, you go to lumistafleestationproject.com. The exterior walls wrapping up, curtain walls uh, installation and glass in installation being done. They're uh, painting, they're hanging cabinets, and June 3rd is the date. There's a little look ahead of the upcoming events. Uh, what's coming up soon 
is the Lummis the Youth Art Show coming up on the 9th to the 16th. So we have, um, so actually it'll be next week. Are we doing the show from there next week? So the 9th is next week, and we have the opening ceremonies for the uh, art show. And uh, that's 9th to the 16th, and then on the 16th is Indoor Farmer's Market. And then the 19th to the 25th is the pizza crawl. I love that, the pizza crawl. If you notice all the way on the right-hand side, Starburst will be on July 29th this year. As always, Farmer's Markets, uh, third Thursday of the month. And uh, coming through May, sometime in May, they'll be uh, going outside. So pretty exciting. We're going to be having a Not Your Average Health Fair coming up and uh, at City Hall. And this will be coming up on, and I can't see the date, but it's March 23rd. It's a Thursday at City Hall. We'll tell you more about that. And then March 11th is the Best Chili in Town uh, cook-off. And that's to support the Bay State Brawlers Roller Derby. Maybe we'll get them on the show for next week. Uh, they're a colorful, car uh, car colorful group of ladies. And it's always fun to have them on. So it's 5 bucks to taste and $20 to enter the contest. And Tuesday, March 7th, uh, next Tuesday, Lummis the Senior Center, uh, 9 to 12. They have COVID vaccines. They have shingle vaccines, pneumonia vaccines. And now it's all up there at the Senior Center. WLPZ, uh, WLPZ.org is having an open house. And come, come help us celebrate our fifth anniversary in open house. Uh, meet our volunteers and tour the radio station and uh, see where they transmit w uh, weather, sports, news. You know, they have a really good, uh, they're doing this new uh, sports program on Mondays. It's really good. You might think of simulcasting if you don't, if it don't have something on it at that time. But they did a really good job. I, I was really impressed. And here we go. I never know what the pictures of the week are, so here we go. It's a surprise to me as well. <laughs> There's our DPW crews uh, right there. They're, 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 um, so when they plow all those lots in the back, they just plow and they make big piles. Then they come back and pick them all up, and that's what they're doing here. So uh, they pile it up at City Hall, and they clean it all off so we could get to work on uh, uh, Wednesday. Look at that. That building's so big. Uh, no matter what comes, uh, we got... New equipment and uh, always working on the older equipment to make sure that it's in, in good repair. And then we had Once Upon a Time and a lot of kids showed up. It's so fun to see them all in their little costumes. And uh, here's a little example. They, they were so excited. You tell them about this? There were parents that said, I can't tell my kid that this thing is coming up because they'll just, they won't sleep at night. They get so excited. So they tell them last minute, they get them all dressed up, and then they come down. They had animal adventures at, at, at the library. Capacity. Look how many people were there. So last week was school vacation, and uh, I got to say, you know, we put this big schedule together of all the different events uh, hosted by the city, uh, recre its recreation department, and uh, the city itself, and um, the library. And every day was multiple things, and every day well attended. This new generator at the new fire uh, station headquarters at 210 Lancaster Street. Uh, we also have added generators to City Hall, DPW, Fire, Police, and EMA. And the new 911 center is not going into the police station. It's actually going into the new fire headquarters. And there's a little glimpse. you got to see it. I mean, this is impressive. It's like Star Trek. Yeah, that's just one section of the new 911. Um, uh, they, they PSAP, so the uh, workstations uh, to be built, the supervisor's area. It's, it's really something. 911 has come a long way from, uh, you know, from when they didn't have 911 and just had to call a phone number and uh, come a long way. Uh, it's remarkable. Uh, there's additional workstations on the way, but all new construction, wonderful job, team effort. And then we had, as I said, community reading day at St. Leo's and had Fritchburg firefighters, some nurses that were there today, uh, detective at the police department, John Bouchard, the fire chief, uh, fire uh, where, where's Bill Penning? I don't see him there. Did he not get in the picture? There he is on the left. Uh, Firefighter Penning and Detective Bouchard and the fire chief over there towards the right. And uh, so we had a good day. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. They're great host to us. And there I am at St. Leo's and uh, St. Anna's. And so we had a lot of fun. And there we are. And we want to thank Detective Shea uh, for his service to the police department. What an outstanding officer. We're lucky to have had him. We'll miss him, but we know it's, uh, you know, it's time for him to shift gears and 
move on to something else. Hey, we made it just in time, everybody. All right, want to thank you for watching the show. Thank you to everybody here for showing up. Scott, Keith, the whole crew here, Bradley, everybody. I mean, this is a fun thing to do for us. We move out a lot of information every week. So thanks for watching. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. You need to show up. Good night. Inside Lemonster is brought to you in part through the generous support of N.P. Crowley Company Incorporated, and by DeCarolis Insurance Agency Incorporated, DeCarolisInsuranceAgency.com, and by Enterprise Bank, Enterprise Bank, Create Success, EnterpriseBanking.com. This is LTV.